Hey everybody, I'm Brock from Brock's Performance. We are back, and listen, if you like what we do, if you enjoy the channel, like, subscribe, as Chris Moore says, smash the alarm button, and uh, we'd really appreciate it. So, for those of you who have been following our 2020 ZH2 coverage, we have, finally, <laughs> some cool stuff going on, some updates that actually make changes to the motorcycle. When last we met, I had teased that I had friends. And I gotta say, our friends at DinoJet have come through. Now, is this a Power Commander that was just cobbled on? No, that is a pre-production unit. We've been working with them, we've got it tested, and it works fantastic. It's very easy to install, just one connector and a couple wires, so you're gonna like that. And from what we understand, they should be available to the public mid to end of, of November. So anyway, what are we doing here? The last time this bike was on the dyno was way back in July. And, uh, you know, all stock, we don't have the ability or didn't have the ability to do any tuning. So we put on a pentacarbon exhaust. Uh, we put a Sprint filter, P0, uh, P, <laughs> such a mouthful, P08 F185 which is the high flow, high performance filter, and we made some runs. Um, if you want to come up here and see, so this is basically where we were, uh, about 179 horsepower, and at wide open throttle, the, the fuel curve is fairly straight, but it, it also gets really, really super safe, and super lean, uh, or I'm sorry, super rich, 11.2 to one before uh, the, the rev limiter finally signs off. For those of you who have been around us before, you know that the reason this is falling off is because it's restricted in the ECU and that we have a team of spies and, and hackers and NASA and guys trying to get into this ECU and so far, drum roll, nothing. It's gonna take time. The H2 took a year, so just be patient. So, what are our options if we don't have a flash DCU? One of the things that I think uh, a lot of guys are really uh, concerned about is, you know, can we get additional drivability out of the bike? It's pretty good stock, but as soon as you put on the pipe and air filter, you've messed up the air fuel ratio. I'm gonna show you how we can get some additional drivability, but we can most definitely get some more higher throttle percentage horsepower. So what do I mean by that? <sighs> it's so complicated to try to explain, but I'm gonna try. Um, we have the stock ECU. Uh, Big Brother says, for emissions purposes, clean air, which we're all about clean air, that when you're cruising uh, low, and I, man, I could bore the hell out of you with terms like uh, speed density and alpha N and all the things that are going on in the ECU that make changes, but I'm gonna try and just break it down and keep it really simple. For emissions purposes in the drivability range, so that's low throttle openings, typically below 10%, low RPMs, you know, your cruising range, two, three, four, five thousand, all the way up to maybe 7,000 RPM. Um, the ECU has a narrow band sensor in the exhaust and it is tuning for emissions, which means it's very lean, 15, 16, we've seen 16.7 to one. They have a little target they have to get to. Are we going to be able to do anything about that? No. Without the ability to flash the ECU, we are at the mercy of the ECU's tuning. Now this is where stuff always gets complicated for folks. So one, yet again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just sort of break it down. For, and we don't know exactly because we're not in the ECU. This is a Power Commander map. And the area you see here in yellow is what the ECU is controlling as far as drivability goes. So can we come in here and change our numbers? Man, let's just get in here and we'll put in 15% more fuel and the bike won't be lean anymore and it'll, it'll, be, it'll ride nice and smooth. No, unfortunately that's not the way it works because as soon as we put 15s in there, the ECU says, uh, 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 that's too rich, and it's gonna lean it down whether the numbers are there or not. So basically what we're gonna do is just avoid, avoid tuning in this area, 
zero, boink. And, but we can tune in this area, all in here. For more confusion, well actually, you know what? We'll get to that here in a second. Basically what I'm gonna do, we wanna see, you know how we are about our base runs, our baseline runs. We wanna see exactly how the bike is performing with the same fuel, the same pipe, the same sprint filter, no mapping in these weather conditions. So once we get to the mapping, we can see honest gains. So why don't you let me uh, go ahead and make a couple baseline runs here. Uh, it's not July anymore, it's October. It's cooler outside, so we'll see what we get and then we'll start tuning and we'll go from there. never fails to amaze me the kind of differences that we see because of the weather. The supercharged bikes, believe it or not, are more sensitive. You know, they always talk about turbos and supercharged bikes aren't as sensitive about the atmosphere. Well, these, these actually are. They don't have intercoolers, so cooler weather helps, lower humidity helps. To give you an example, and I, and I got it set up right here so you can see where we were. Last time's the red line. We had 179 horsepower. We jumped up to 180, 186, 187. Now listen, I need to emphasize, nothing is different on this motorcycle. It's literally the same fuel in the tank. It's the same sprint filter in the air box. It's the same pentacarbon. The only thing that has changed is the correction factor. Um, you can see the cor correction factor previously was a 1.04, of course it was in July, so power was down, it was trying to round up. Now we're at a 1.00, 1.01, which means it's just, <laughs> it just makes more horsepower. Now, one of the things I wanna show you here, without getting too complicated, if we look at a dyno chart, and anyone who's seen a dyno chart before, basically you have engine RPM and you have power. I'm gonna take torque out, and now that we have the power commander on there, I can come over here and I can say, okay, I wanna see the throttle position. All right, now, and then I'm gonna just close everything else out, just so we can look at what we're, what we're trying to see here. Now, and we've, we've gone over this time and time again. This is horsepower, but if I sent some guys over this chart, they'd go, wow, what's wrong with the torque? That's not the torque. That's the throttle position. So basically what we're gonna do, now we're, we're gonna go, we're gonna tune 100% throttle on this bike, but it's a moving target. And when I say that, we don't reach 100% throttle until about 
I don't know, 7,800 RPM or so, and it only stays 100% throttle until maybe 10.3. And when I say that, of course, I'm at 100% throttle. But these bikes only have one set of throttle plates. They don't have two sets. So you can't just take one set out, throw them out the window and say, oh, my bike's not restricted anymore. The one set of throttle plates is actually turning back. This is to save you from yourself. And when I say that at 6,000 RPM, even though the, thro the throttle position was actually at 100, we were only at 73% as far as what the bike was making power wise that that helps save you and you, that's what a lot of things your power modes do the same thing even though we have the power mode turned off this is in there and you can't turn that off and then when we come up to here you see this craziness this is where they start shutting down the butterflies shutting them down you're too noisy you're making too much pollution and they shut it down all the way down to about 43% it's all the, so the throttles only open 43% at 12.6 right before the peak limiter comes in and shuts everything off. So I'm going to show you how we dyno this. I'm going to show you some, let me show you something that might blow, blow a lot of you away. It's easy, but it's hard. I'll be able to break it down. I hope into stuff that even the novices can understand and the experts go, wow, that's badass. So I'll show you that here in a minute. All right, some of you observant types may have noticed that as I was dynoing, the dash started flashing and lighting up like a Christmas tree. Now, I'm not going to harp on this. We spent, we spent about a week and a day trying to figure out how to clear the codes previously. Well, now we have the ability to, to plug into the Kawasaki Diagnostic Connector, which is this little red thing right here and it goes back to an OBD2 reader. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with OBD2, it, it, it's onboard diagnostics. It's in the autom automotive world. It it's, happens all the time. You can go to any auto parts store and they'll read your codes and tell you why something's going on. Motorcycle world's a little different. They do it, but it's not real consistent. So, what, but we, may, we managed to figure it out here. And, and what that means is, so, why did this start flashing? Well, think about it this way. This bike has ABS sensor rings, so it knows the speed of the front wheel and the speed of the rear wheel. Well, the front wheel is strapped in, so obviously it's not going very fast, but the rear wheel, we're looking at about 100, almost 159 miles an hour. So when your ECU says, your front wheel's going zero, your rear wheel's going 159. No, 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 something is, nothing, nothing good could be going on. Something bad's going on. So it flashes you to warn you so that you can pull over and figure out what's going on. What I'll do, and once we can get into the ECU, we'll be able to clear those out easily and they also won't come up. We can't. So uh, what I've got here, this is a Maxi Link ML619. Now, this is actually on the high end of the OBD reader scale. I know guys that, that have AutoZone units for $12 that do the same thing. So just get any OBD2. What, all you have to do is turn the key on. It'll do a little reading and we'll say, okay, we want OBD2, go. And I'm gonna set this down. Sometimes it takes a second. And basically it's going in right now and it's reading it's reading the codes that it thinks is going on. What's going, what's gone wrong. So where we are right now, codes found, number one. Okay, that's awesome. So what do we wanna do? Do we wanna read them? Sure, what does number one mean? Vehicle speed sensor. So that's just what I was saying. The vehicle speed sensor says front, rear, don't match, send the code. So what we're gonna do here, okay, we're gonna escape out of that. We're gonna go down here to erase codes. Are you sure? Yep, we know what's going on. Erase done, presto. No more flashy flashy. Now, as soon as I start te testing, it's gonna do it again, but that way, um, you can. these codes will come on sometimes, even, even if you're doing a long burnout, or if you're doing a rolling burnout, or if you're doing wheelies and stoppies, sometimes they'll flip out. That's just an easy way to do it. 
we'll have a link in our description as to where you can get in the long description where you can get one of these cables so if you want to do that you'll be good to go once again until we get our flash ready and then you won't have to mess with this stuff so all right now that we've cleared the codes we're just going to pull this off and now we're going to come over here and we're going to talk about mapping all right what i'm going to show you now a lot of guys will they'll they'll say brock why would you use a power Commander, they're piggybacks. Nobody wants those. Blah 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 blah. Well, I'll tell you what. Dino Jets PC5, in conjunction with their tuning software, which we're going to use uh, C3 software right now to show you, to show you that there was no tune in the bike, and show you how we're going to create one to put in the bike. Very very simply, and unfortunately, it's CAN bus based, so I have to start the bike. I'm going to start the bike and receive the map that's in the ECU right now. So we just pulled the map directly from the ECU, as you can see for the mapping we were just doing, it's all zeros. So what do you do now? And, and this is where stuff gets really, really weird. I'm gonna show you because if, if, if you think about it, let me do this. If I go pick this map and look at it. All right, so, so anybody who's ever seen a Power Commander map before, what, what is this? Why, why does it do this? Well, look over here. Here's our, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to uh, engine RPM. So now we, we've got engine RPM versus throttle position, right? We're gonna ignore power right now. So at, let's just pick 100% throttle, 5,000 RPM. Why, there's a zero, but I see at 5,000 RPM, you know, we definitely have mapping here. What that means is, is, is in order to get a straight curve, we've actually got to go map at 59%, which is, that's 60. So in order to get the air fuel straight curve, or curve straightened up, you have to actually map it in places that are constantly changing, constantly moving. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how, you, how to develop a map like this, what we do. Unfortunately, the bike has to be running and it has to be in, uh, in a particular mode so I'm not gonna be able to talk a lot, but I'm just gonna let you watch what's, go what's going on and what I want you to pay close attention to. We're gonna take, we're gonna take all these numbers out, right? And what I want you to watch is how the cursor moves and matches this curve. So we'll get all ready and I'll show you that. Noticed what the C3 software 
and the Dynojet Model 250 would do. We had it in something called live tune mode. I'm not a fan, but it works a whole hell of a lot better than nothing when we can't make the throttle and engine RPM what we call one to one. It's a whole nother video. So anyway, you saw what was happening. I put the bike in, I was in fifth gear. I whacked the gas wide open. The dyno put it, the brake on to hold it. And then as it was accelerating, 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 it was measuring and changing. What that means is if I come over here and look at the last dyno run we made, this was with the power commander on, but no map. You can see the air fuel ratio. It's not the worst I've seen for a stock bike. It's certainly not the best. But if you look over here, these are dips. So let's just say we've got our air fuel target at 13.2 to one. Well, here at 5,000 RPM, we're at 12 to one. So the bike's really rich. Well, I come over here at 5,000 RPM and look, I got zero. Why? Because 5,000 RPM is actually 60% throttle. So we had to alter the map at 60% throttle. And you can see it goes from minus 15, minus five, minus five. It's trying to lean this area down. It does the same thing through here. And then when the bike really starts to go rich up top, notice up in here, we're, we're back down into this 60, 50, 40% throttle range, right? There's 50, here's 40 at 12.3. So when you come over here, you see it gradually following that curve and leaning everything down so that we don't end up with this big old dip. Uh, what we got, 11, six, yeah, about 11, about 11.6 to one. Um, from a performance standpoint, that, that's just really, really rich. You could run them that rich, that's fine. But if, if I'm at 13 to one and you're 11.6, you're getting your ass kicked. So anyway, Let's go and do a dyno run. You saw, we, this, is, this is just a little, this isn't a full map. We'll do a dyno run to see whether or not we've straightened this up and see what kind of power we picked up. Now, yet again, this is a whole nother video, but I wanna to touch on it. Some of you may have noticed that when I was initially riding that we were populating out in here, okay? That's because we were in live tune mode. We, we, we talked about that. We don't want anything here, so I just erased the zeros. Well, where did this come from? Where did all this stuff come from? <clears throat> One of the reasons I don't like bikes tuning themselves, whether it be an auto tune or any of the other uh, ones you can buy is, on the dyno, the bike is only accelerating under load. It's taking the measurements and the measurements are being changed. As soon as you back off the gas, now you're going in here and you're getting false you're getting false readings. You get something, and I, I attribute it to, to reversion, right? We have, the, we have the probe in the pipe, I back off, and if I, get, if I draw any air in, the probe measures it and goes, oh man, you need 10 more percent fuel. You need nine point more percent fuel. So for any of you that have an auto tune and set up, your, set up your target air fuel ratios just where you wanted them and went out for a ride and the bike got, you know, it said, do you, we measured some changes. Do you, want to ma do you want to install them? And you say, yeah, that's gotta be a good idea. I'm gonna install them. Well, all it does is continually richen up the map. And if I backed off this, the gas through here, it'd go ahead and screw all this section up too. So, and many of you have had this happen. You get a map from our map support system, your bike runs, you're flying, you have it tuned at a dyno, at a dyno service that doesn't understand this, or you put on an auto tune and you effectively go out and ruin a perfectly, perfectly good map. And it's always, 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 do you want more fuel? Do you want more fuel? Do you want more fuel? This is a reason why it's beyond the scope of what we're doing here to get into it any deeper, but hopefully that was an aha moment for some of you. Let's go in and, and basically what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take all this, Ghibli Gook, I'm gonna make them zeros. I'm gonna start the bike and send the map. All right. Now we know that a non-corrupt in this area and hopefully good mapping in here. I'm not saying we're finished. Sometimes you have to, we have to work on this for quite some time to get it where we want it. But 
we'll go in here and we'll see whether or not we get straighter on this air fuel and we'll see what happens to power. modern video, <laughs> what happened? Why do I look like this? Well, I'm dressed up a little bit today because it was election day. I went out and voted. Hopefully you did also. But why is it different? What happened? Well, if you notice from the last scene when we cut, I had a frustrated, uh, and I had a dino error message without going into it all. Um, basically, we had some technical difficulties that prevented us from doing what we originally intended to do, which was take this run and uh, our base run with zeros in the mapping and then put in that partial map just to see if we cleaned up the air fuel any and we got any more power out of the bike. Now, I'm going to do the same thing because it's a different time and it's a different day, so we always get base runs. So I'm going to put zeros in the map. I'm going to go make three base runs. And then I'll put in the map that we created last time just to see what happens, the partial map. And then as a bonus, I've been working diligently to get this project finished up as far as I can get it considering we don't have all the correct parts. I actually have the map from our map support system. So uh, once you get your power commander, if you want our map, we're going to try the exact map that you would receive and see what kind of... Uh, see what kind of results we get with that. So I'm not gonna bore you with the base runs. I'm just gonna go make them and then I'll tell you what we get right after that. Then we'll uh, go into some of those other things.
So if you would like to come and take a look here. Now, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Everybody that looks at dyno charts looks at the peak number and goes, two horsepower? Ew. Stupid power commander. <laughs> That's not what we're looking at. Yes, it's a reference. So what we're looking at here, the original map was here with the zero, I'm sorry, the original run with zero mapping is here and you can see it's sort of all over the place and gets real rich. So what did we do? We went in and with that little bit of mapping, look how much straighter we got our air fuel ratio. Now, so what that means is you're gonna be picking up acceleration. It's the same old thing and we harp on it all the time. You know, if I'm, if I'm at 12.4 to one versus 13.5, you know, the bike's gonna make a little bit, it's gonna make a little bit more power, but it's also gonna be smoother on acceleration, which makes it faster. Now, we're seriously limited because of the stock ECU, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the gains that can be made. Now, that was just with this map here. And, uh, you know, little bit of changes here and there. I, I call this type of mapping trying to nail jello to a tree because it's constantly moving. Well, think about what we just did there. All right, so we... We straightened up 100% throttle, but what about 80? What about 60? What about 40? I'm not gonna bore you with it, but I can tell you it's very, very similar to what's going on here. It's constantly a moving target, and it is a pain in my rear to get a decent map for our support system with a stock ECU, but you know, we do it for you. We, we put in the work, we put in the hours. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the map support system map in the bike. I'd like for you to look at the air fuel in this area when I'm driving and I wanna keep it, I want you to keep in mind, this area here has to remain untouched because the ECU is still controlling that. But once you get to the point where the ECU isn't controlling it anymore, we can put maps in there or we can adjust the fuel at different throttle openings. So, you know, if you're, uh, you know, if you're in the corners and you're coming into a, a, a fast fifth gear corner or fourth gear corner, you downshift, you've got different throttle positions up in the higher RPM, you're gonna, you're, even though the emissions is working for cleaner air, we can control this, uh, this, mapping in here because it stays static so you'll have a nice air fuel ratio at different throttle openings at higher rpms for a smoother and faster bike so enough talking let's go put this other map in and see if we can get any additional improvements out of this thing real quick to explain our map support mapping what i've done is i've requested this map from our system they arrive currently in email form. We're working on some cooler ways to get them to you. But all I'm gonna do is go in here and open up my map. Now you're gonna see a bunch of don't do it, stops. Just read that when you get to it. One of the things we have people do occasionally is they'll get into their power commander and try to set their throttle position. Well, if you try and set your throttle position on a bike that's not at 100% throttle, you whack it out. Bike won't run. It jacks everything up. Then you got to get with us or Dynojet to help you. So just leave it alone. It's fine. So all I'm going to do, and, and we give you all the instructions to do this. We tell you what the map's for. Is it for what kind of pipe? What kind of, can, do you have a, a noise insert? What kind of air filter? All kinds of stuff. And what we recommend you do is just save this map as what it is, put it on your desktop, and then and this, we, we have guys, I'll have people send me send me messages, they're like, my, my computer doesn't recognize what you sent over or it turned it into something else. Well, if you don't have the Power Commander software installed on your computer, when it sends this file over, your, file, your, your computer's gonna get all messed up, it's not gonna understand what it is, and a lot of times it'll change the extension and it makes the map corrupt. So make sure you have Power Commander Control Center software. You can go straight into this map, and then actually, I'm showing it to you in the Power Commander uh, uh, file, but um, I'm, go I'm actually gonna install this map using uh, the C3 software instead of doing it this way. So let me, let me close out of this. I gotta I got start the bike. <laughs> Just sent the map. 
have support street map to the power commander. We're going to go ahead and make some runs and see what happens now. anticlimactic holy cow how can we not pick up any more when we put the real map in well what I really wanted you to notice was how well it was operating up in this particular area Typic without that mapping in there you're gonna have a, a either a lot leaner or a lot richer so from a throttle performance standpoint that's really good horsepower wise oh wait a minute seems like you'd be able to make additional horsepower if you got a power commander right everybody knows these things aren't right we even showed it to you so i'm gonna i'm gonna pull something up here to to, to tell you the difference when we send you what we call our street map right it is designed for two things to give you the best drivability to give you the best drive uh, acceleration well three things um and to give you longevity and when i say longevity What's the best air fuel ratio? We get asked that all the time. Well, the air fuel ratio that's best for you is the one that the bike runs the best with, depending upon what you're doing, whether you're at the drag strip or land speed or whatever. Well, we know that if we change the air fuel ratio on these bikes, let's just leave this last one. We'll just take a look at that. And then I'm gonna go back over here and show you a test run that we made. <laughs> Another squeaky ZH2 uh, gas tank. But look at the look at this look at the difference here. Now we've got pretty much, I mean the, pretty much identical conditions. Well, how can we get so much more power? Well, on a bike like this, if I go here and I look at our air fuel ratio. The difference between 13.18 and 12.79, let's go back down here. Let me switch back and there's that, there's that. What is the best air fuel ratio? Well, if you want to make the most horsepower on the dyno, it's the red line. This thing made 195 horsepower. But do we want it that lean for serious street use? Eh, wouldn't hurt anything at the drag strip, but you know, we like to fatten them up, make them a little bit safer the further you go. And because we've got so much experience land speed racing these H2s, you, you got to remember it's basically the same as, a, as the 2015 H2. We have logged data that tells us what the air fuel ratio is doing 
as you're moving and going faster and we incorporate that into our mapping which is why I had to fuzz you guys up a little bit so basically what we're looking at is a nice smooth map that's going to not be harmful to your engine uh, so, so that you can keep on going fast all right what else do we have going on that's enough on mapping right oh no that's right because we have a power commander guess what we get to put the full exhaust on now we'll talk about that here in a minute we have one more little tidbit of good news we are working with our friends at Batubo and we will have a very nice now th th ignore this stuff up here we had to pull most of the parts off of them to get modified or changed um, but we will have a very nice steering damper for the ZH2 soon we're making a, a couple different changes to it but it's going to be a Batubo, a real high quality unit um, you know it, when you go over to Europe it's Owens or Batubo you know here in the United States it's what the hell's a Batubo but we're going to change that so anyway when next we meet assuming we don't have a apocalypse this evening after, after the election results um, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go ahead and put that full system on and we're going to show you what we can do with it because we'll be able to tune it. And we're also going to show you what we're going to do about the error codes because we can't get rid of them because we don't have the ability to flash the ECU yet. Believe me, very bright guys are working on it. It'll happen, but it's going to take a while. So anyway, what do we got? We got 195 horsepower out of a bike that, you know, is a whole lot of fun to begin with. Um, I wonder if we can get 200 with the full system. Hmm, and no flash. That'd be something, wouldn't it? Give us something to shoot for. Anyway, I'm Brock from Brock's Performance. Until next time, we'll see you then.